Hello everyone and welcome to Historic Bath. I'm Mr. Groves and I'm about to take you inside what is North Carolina's oldest town. You know, for such a small town, it's packed with a lot of history. Let's check it out. Let's start with the St. Thomas Episcopal Church. This is actually the oldest standing church in North Carolina. It was built in 1734. And believe it or not, people still use it for church services today. You can actually walk inside anytime, sit down, and kind of just take in not only all of the history inside this building, but taking in how hard the town has worked to keep it up. I know my wife and I had a great time going inside and sitting and just taking on all the history on the inside and taking in all the beauty that's on the outside. Next, we got John Lawson. You're probably thinking, who? Well, John Lawson was actually a famous navigator in the Carolina colony. He made himself famous not only with his adventures, but he published these adventures in what was called A New Voyage to Carolina. It was published in 1709. He checked out all the flora and fauna of the Carolina colony. In addition, he interacted with different Indian nations and got along with them pretty well, which is ironic because he was captured by the Tuscarora Indians in 1711, and his death led to the Tuscarora War. But what makes him so important in Bath was that he was not only the co-founder of the town, but part of his house still stands today. If you look in the bo bottom right-hand corner, his house, well, what's left of it, is sitting right here. This appears to be his chimney. And yes, another house was built on top of it, the Bonner House, which we'll get to in just a moment. Downtown Historic Bath, you can see it on your left. Not too far from that street was the first public library ever opened in the Carolina Colony. Top right-hand corner, you've got the Palmer Marsh House, which was built in the 1700s. Bottom right-hand corner, you've got the Bonner House, which I talked about earlier. As you can see, there's definitely a difference in structure, a difference in living facilities, um, especially in the Bonner House, which was actually owned by a plantation owner. And we got a really good look at what life was like during that time inside the Bonner House, especially since the kitchen technically was away from the house and that was because whenever they cooked up seafood clams oysters shrimp that kind of thing they didn't want the smell to carry into the dining room so they could keep entertaining their guests and whatnot and obviously i wouldn't talk about bath without mentioning one of the most notorious pirates in american history Talking about Blackbeard, of course, you see him on the left. It is believed that he and his crew lived on Plums Point, which is across the bay over across Bath Creek. And apparently, Bath boomed in the early 1700s as a port city because of Blackbeard and his crew. And people have been searching for years to find that buried treasure. And supposedly it was buried there before Blackbeard and his crew went down to Ocracoke Island, where Blackbeard was killed in 1718. And then the bottom right-hand corner, you see one of the artifacts they believe belongs to him. There are several other things that Bath has. They've talked about the James Adams Floating Theater, which toured up and down the east coast of the United States. And Edna Ferber, who wrote a book called Showboat about this boat, spent some time in Bath. And it's obviously a big deal to its history. Of course, top right-hand corner, we've got Blackbeard, who is also known as Edward Teach. And then for anybody who's not really a history buff, you got Bath Creek here in the bottom right-hand corner. For anybody who likes to go boating, go fishing, that kind of thing, Bath Creek is a popular spot. I just wouldn't want to be there if a hurricane struck. A few more things before I say farewell. There's a historic marker of the first public library. It was set up about 1700, and books were sent over from England by Reverend Thomas Bray. Top right-hand corner, you've got Bath Creek, taken from the Bonner House doorsteps. And then some more things that stood outside the St. Thomas Episcopal Church, which were definitely worth looking at. That'll do it for Bath. The sign says it all.
First town, first port. I want to say thanks to Bath for providing such great history for myself as a photographer as well as a teacher to enjoy and share with you all. Thanks for watching.